The following is an ABC Sports presentation. On ABC, the network of the Olympics. Spanning the globe to bring you the constant variety of sport. The thrill of victory and the agony of defeat. The human drama of athletic competition. This is ABC's Wide World of Sports. Brought to you by Ice Blue Aqua Velva, the aftershave lotion that's better for your skin, for a wonderful feeling of fitness and a clean, crisp, manly scent. By the world's first detergent-proof car wax, Master Wax, the new one-step liquid cleaner wax from the Simonize Company. And by Absorbing Junior and Absorbing Powder for Athlete's Foot. They relieve itching and kill athlete's foot fungus on contact. You're looking at the famous Space Needle, which stands high above the Queen City of the Puget Sound country, Seattle, Washington. A city that's bursting with vigor in an expanding economy and the scene of seafair time every year. A city full of fun. Welcome to the great Pacific Northwest, Lake Washington in Seattle of the 1967 Gold Cup race. Twelve of the fastest unlimited hydroplanes in the world running in the Grand Prix. Sixty miles of racing for the biggest prize in boat racing, the Gold Cup. And a man working with us today on ABC's Wide World of Sports is Bill Muncy, a man who has won the Gold Cup four times, and today we'll be looking for number five. And, Bill, there's some pretty tough customers out there. Keith, this, without question, represents, I think, the strongest field we've ever built for Gold Cup competition. Most of the boats, the stronger boats, came in around 110 to 112 mile an hour. We had some laps around 118 around this three-mile course, and uh, I'm inclined to think we're going to see world record-breaking Gold Cup heats all day today. Myra Slovak, Jack Regis, some of the old original lead puts are still charging after you. It should be quite exciting. Bill. But we've got some young guys with new equipment that are ready to charge and make honest men out of those of us who've had maybe a little more experience. So it's certainly going to be an exciting event all day long. Well, Bill, let's meet some of the young men that'll be in Heat 1A, the opening competition for the 67 Gold Cup. Bill Shoemaker driving the Miss Bardall. There's Warner Gardner, retired Air Force Colonel from Bay City, Michigan, driving Miss Lapeer. And Walter Cade at age 63. Out there in the Save Airs Mist in Heat 1A. Comes from Detroit. This is Bob Gillum out of the Seattle-Tacoma area. Been building and driving racing boats for quite a while. And in the Harrah's Club out of Lake Tahoe, Chuck Hickling from Bellevue, Washington. Another lead-footed veteran. He can fly. And this is Jack Regis from San Leandro, California, who will be in the Notre Dame. Jack Regis in 1959 involved in a serious accident driving the Miss Bardall. But Jack is off the beach and back in competition. And as they start to fire the big boats, let's get some details on it from Bill Muncy. Harris Club has great, great credentials, Keith. Last year's national champion and the 1966 Gold Cup winner. The Miss Bardell's having a tremendous year with three out of four wins without question. The odds on favorite here. The Miss Lapeer is powered by a Rolls-Royce engine, pulls about 2,000 horsepower with a propeller speed of about 12,000 revolutions per minute. The Hyperloop happens to also have a Rolls-Royce engine with Bob Gilliam driving. Save Airs Mist, as you mentioned, uh, 25 years of experience with 63-year-old Walter Cade. An Allison engine powers this boat. And the Notre Dame, probably one of the best prepared machines, but not necessarily the best handling. They've had a little rough year from the standpoint of getting the kind of directional stability necessary. Well, that big barge you saw there is the starting barge where the officials are located and where the starting line is located. Here, uh, the graphic art to show you the layout of the Gold Cup course. It is three miles around, oval-shaped. From the north to the south, left to right, as we watch him in action here today on Lake Washington. And before the race starts, there's always a great deal of strategy when that one-minute white flag goes up. you got to know your field, Keith. And in this warm-up, right here, coming off this exit pen, heading to the starting line, you pick a lane that you think can do the best job for you strategically. You know the limitations of the other boats, the other drivers, and you certainly know what your boat will do. So you find one where you can go with all this water and speeds of 150 mile an hour. That big pie face clock indicates it is now time to go. And here comes the Notre Dame, the white boat, and coming from the outside, Miss Lapeer, the blue and white boat with Warner Gardner. So it's a battle between Lapeer and Notre Dame as they hit the starting line.
tied for Heat 1A. And Notre Dame running inside should assume the lead in Heat 1A as they go into the south turn. Jack Regis driving the Notre Dame right there in the center of your picture. And that's the Lapeer with Warner Gardner coming up on the outside. And the Notre Dame bouncing and it's exploded. The Notre Dame has exploded and going into the south turn. The Notre Dame has come apart and Harris Club hits the Notre Dame, flies into the air. And we've got two boats, at least two boats involved in a major wreck going into the south turn of the Gold Cup course. The red flares are out. The Notre Dame, as you see there, is sinking. So we, I think, have lost two boats right here at the beginning of Heat 1A. The helicopter manned by the Coast Guard, 13th District, right on the scene. These people do an incredible job of rescue work all through the Puget Sound country. And they are right here. It looks like a skin diver has one of the drivers right now. That would be Jack Regis, a tender boat out there with another skin diver. And this fellow should be picking up Chuck Hickling. So we'll have to wait a moment to find out about the condition of the two drivers. But the Notre Dame and Harris Club have both gone down. Notre Dame literally exploded in front of Harris Club. Harris Club hit it, flew into the air, and we'll wait for a moment as the helicopter comes sprinting into the shore, bearing at least one of the drivers. And we're told Jack Regis is aboard the helicopter. So Regis is being brought in by helicopter. Hickling comes in by boat. And while we are waiting for some word on the condition of the two drivers, let's go back in slow motion and stop action with Bill Muncy and take a second look at what happened at the south turn. Actually, Keith, you can see the accident begin to happen. The center boat, the Notre Dame, begins to bobble one side to the other from Sponson to Sponson, and then he ends up dropping his right Sponson. There he drops it. He drops the Sponson. The stern is going to have to come down because of the leverage. It'll come down, and then he'll end up having to bury the bow. This is a characteristic that you can just about it's telegraph to you before it starts. Amazing that there you see Jack Regis coming out on the right ear screen. Amazingly enough, Keith, uh, Keith the, the boat stayed right side up, but veered to the right, to starboard, right in front of Harris Club, who was probably also having had a little late start coming up at great speeds, probably around 155 mile an hour, catapulted over the top uh, of Notre Dame, and Hickling is still aboard, and of course, begin to break up too. So here we have Jack Regis coming out of the helicopter. Regis is now partially conscious. He is in great pain. Chuck Hickling, we're told, is also conscious aboard the tender boat, and he too certainly would be in some great pain. You know, before the race started, we talked with Jack Regis about his accident in 1959, and uh, we had to be curious about how he felt about going out. Here, part of that conversation. Jack, you survived one of uh, a terrible wreck eight years ago, and here you are back in the cockpit. I'm a little curious what your personal reaction is getting back in unlimited racing. Well, Keith, I've wanted to the last couple, three years, and and uh, it's, a, it's a great thrill, and I guess you, I, once you do it, you just can't get, get away from it, I guess. But you have no, res you're not shy about it? You can still uh, lead foot it around that course? No, Keith, I don't remember a thing about my accident, so I'm in real good shape. And it's almost tragic that we have had Jack involved in another major accident here on Lake Washington for the 1967 Gold Cup. It'll take some time to clean the debris off the lake, and while we are waiting, we're watching an air show, Clayton Scott flying a B&W replica. And we'll be back with more from Lake Washington and the 1967 Gold Cup race here on ABC's Wide World of Sports in just a moment. Now... Pens get you back to school with a special you can't afford to miss. You save 38 cents. Buy one big pen, get two more free. Three big pens for the price of one. Buy this big extra fine point for 49 cents, get two 19 cent medium point big pens free. All three for just 49 cents. You save 38 cents. And every big pen is guaranteed to write the first time every time. Remember this ice skating torture test? In this amazing demonstration, a big pen strapped to a skate is slammed and jammed into the ice, then put in fire. Despite this punishment, more than you would give any pen, Bic writes the first time, every time. So get on the Bic Back to School Special and get two big pens free. Hurry, Back to School Special is limited, available only on this card. While they last, Buy one big pen, get two pens free. James Franciscus guest stars on the FBI tomorrow night on ABC.
Back here at Lake Washington for the rerun of Heat 1A and the start of the 1967 Gold Cup race, the Atlas Van Lines boat is moving out and will join the field for the rerun of 1A, moving up because of the wreck which destroyed Harris Club and the Notre Dame. So we'll have five boats, the Bartol, Lapeer, Hilton Hyperloop, Save Airs Mist, and Atlas Van Lines running here in 1A. They stacked fire there. He's loaded his stacks up with raw fuel, no problem at all. So Bob Gillum has the Hyperloop moving out onto the course as well. Five boats running here in Heat 1A. And while we're waiting, let's take a look at the cockpit with Bill Muncy. To the top of the cockpit, or at least on the instrumentation, you've got a water speed indicator, which is a pretty critical instrument to us. Uh, you can see it goes to 170 miles an hour. Next to that is the revolutions per minute. How many revolutions per minute your engine is turning? Next is the manifold pressure gauge and a stopwatch. I would say probably the two most critical instruments are the manifold pressure and the revolutions per minute. The little white button that just went out of your screen uh, injects nitrous oxide into the combustion chamber, which gives you about three to 500 additional horsepower instantaneously. The seat is contoured individually to fit each driver. There are no seat belts. It's designed so that in case of accidents, you're thrown clear of the boat. So the big crowd is up on the shore now. They're on their feet. They're uh, perched on every kind of thing they can find from an oil bucket to a crane or a car top so that they can see the action as the field for Heat 1A moves around the north turn and gets ready for the run south. Remember, they're running north to south, left to right, around a three-mile course. Bill Muncy will be competing in the Miss U.S. as the afternoon goes on. And while we have the opportunity to talk with him and watch Heat 1A, let's move over to Bill Muncy as the Bardall takes the inside position on the start. Moving to the starting line, it looks Keith the Zola Lapeer has a little more boat speed going into that corner, and he has the right of way because he's out in front. He could pinch the Bardall into the first turn if he wants to. It doesn't look like at this point that that's exactly what's happening. Of course, Shoemaker's been having a great season with the Bardo. He's won three out of four races. He knows the limitations of his boat. He knows that in this instance, he can go in, push the field wide if he wants to, and come off short. Uh, thereby, the balance of the field will have to use additional power to keep up with him. Uh, this is a, it's a four-heat race, really, and you have to plan your strategy to a point where you can finish the four complete heats, even though you may change an engine. So Shoemaker is engulfed in this vacuum inside the boat. You, even though the noise is formidable, the speed, of course, is very fast, you're not really aware of these things. 2,000 horsepower will show you a tremendous amount of torque, and some of it comes up through the steering wheel, so you have to make uh, certain corrections for this. As they move down the back straightaway, the Bardol holding the inside position and has a lead over the Lapeer with Warner Gardner. Now, Bill, I'm a little curious as to how aware are you in this kind of a concussive circumstance? How aware are you of the guy next to you? You line the field up in your mind's eye. You know exactly where everybody is, although there is a blind spot in the rooster tail uh, alongside which another boat can hide. Uh, I'm inclined to think that that's just what we saw happening in the case of the Lapeer. But with the torque, having to push on the steering wheel with the left hand and pull with the right hand a little bit to keep it going straight and then making the corrections right, left, right, left, going into the corner, you can move this field around pretty well. And knowing that it's a long race, you'll try and plan speeds that you can average around the race course with which you can live, but if someone's going by, they're going to have to strain their equipment to do it. As Bill Muncy pointed out, it's a four heat race, four 15 mile heats, a total of 60 miles for the Gold Cup. Bill Shoemaker holding the inside position in the Bardall. Warner Gardner in Miss Lapeer is running second. He's outside, followed by the Hilton Harbor Loop, St. Airs Miss, and Atlas Van Lines as they go through that south turn again. You accumulate points. The man with the greatest number of points at the end of 60 miles will win the Gold Cup race. And Bill Shoemaker in the brand spanking new Miss Bardall streaks down the back straightaway, well out in front now. Of Warner Gardner in the Lapeer. Gardner has moved inside, but in very likely, uh, Shoemaker will shut the door on him, force him to cross the wake again, and pick up even more distance coming out of the north turn. And we'll be back for the finish of 1A in just a moment. Boots. Wide boots. A new wide tread tire from Goodyear. Wide boots are made for rolling. They hold road for you. They roll and roll and roll and roll cause Goodyear built them too. White boots are up to two four inches wider. Built wide like tires on the racing track. White boots get rolling quicker and stop quicker. They roll from here to Timbuktu and back. White boots are made for rolling, they hold the road for you. They roll and roll and roll and roll, 
Cause Goodyear built them too. Wide boots. Goodyear makes them. We pick up the final lap of action here in Heat 1A now of the 1967 Gold Cup race. We'll set the field for you. This is your leader, Miss Bardall, with Bill Shoemaker. And running in second place, still running tight and close, but still in second place, Warner Gardner in the Miss Lapeer. They'll be followed by the Hilton Hyperloop with Bob Gillum, Sabres Miss Walter Cade, and Atlas Van Lines with Bob Schroeder. And Bill Muncy, since you're getting ready to go out there among them yourself, as we watch the finish of Heat 1A, it looks like the Bardall, which has been running very well, is off to a good start here in the Gold Cup race. I'd like very much to enjoy that same position, Keith. Uh, certainly he has a substantial lead over one of the better boats in the race, one of the strongest boats, and a boat that has been in real good competition throughout the season, and that's the Miss Lapeer with Warner Gardner. The Shoemaker and his boat, the Bardall, is a phenomenal boat, really, so far. They've won three out of four races. Uh, it's a brand new boat. Normally, new boats suffer new boat blues. It takes them a year or so to get the bugs refined, but they've performed beautifully. He has the power when he needs it. He can turn on good speeds, and he knows how to play this game beautifully. He started when he, I think he was about two years old, and he's been going strong ever since. Well, the uh, Bardall boat running like it's on a string right now, and as you can see, stretching it out over the Miss Lapeer, and Warner Gardner. This would be the fourth Gold Cup for Ole Bardall if it goes well for him this afternoon. Of course, you'd like to get off the beach quick and get yourself 400 points, and then you can kind of sit back and see what else happens and wait for the draw to come around. So the Miss Bardall with Bill Shoemaker flying under the checkered flag and winning Heat 1A worth 400 points. And screaming along in second place, and you can see it's a substantial Nine or ten second edge he enjoys over the Miss Lapeer. And the speed for the Bardall, just a fraction under 104 miles an hour, which is very quick, very fast under the condition, because we do have at the moment some wind, and we are getting a good choppy quartering of the water. As you can see, the Unlimiteds come off the exit boy of the turn. They bang and, and crack around pretty good. Power on the water, power in the air. Remember, the national air races from Reno later this year on ABC's Wide World of Sports. We'll be back with more from the 1967 Gold Cup race, but right now let's go back to Fairmont Park in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Jim McKay and the Women's National Outdoor Swimming and Diving Championships. Thank you very much, Jim, and we continue with the Gold Cup race here on Lake Washington in Seattle. And, Bill, you were right at the outset. You said it'd be fast, but I'm a little curious about the weather. The sun going in and out. Does this present any kind of a problem to you? Not from the standpoint of observing the competition and lining up in your mind's eye and observing the buoys and seeing to it that you're in a good strategic position on the race course. Uh, the only thing it can do is heat can sap energy out of a engine just like it can a uh, human being. So the ever-changing thing here, if it, I had my way, it'd be a little overcast every day. Engines would breathe a little more easily and more efficiently. All right, Bill Muncie, and before we get too far along here, let's check the field for the final heat of the 1967 Gold Cup race. Miss Bardall having won three elimination heats, totals 1,200 points. Miss Lapeer with 1,100 points, and really the Gold Cup lies between those two. Miss Budweiser, 925 points, sits third right now, and your U Miss U.S. is in fourth spot with 750 points, followed by Atlas Fan Lines, Wayfarers Club, and the alternate boat will be the Hilton Hyperloop. And of course, as we get ready to go to that final moment, it's a time of anxiety. It really is, and uh, I'd like to say the U.S. Equipment Company has prepared this boat uh, beautifully for this coming competition. You see there the sponsors, one on both sides. The Miss U.S. ready to go into this final heat, and I certainly hope that we can give you the kind of performance that will be exciting for a wrap-up of the 67 Gold Cup. Well, Bill, good luck to you in the Miss U.S., and we'll be back with the final heat in just a moment. I'm J.B. Smith in Yellowstone National Park at the start of a shell mileage demonstration. Dick Callanan at the finish line in Grand Teton National Park. We're off, following those identical cars. One has Super Shell with Platformate. The other, same amount of Super Shell without Platformate. Which is which? We'll soon find out. The answer is on the doors under those black panels. Past Old Faithful and heading into high mountains. Tough on mileage. Top quality gasolines are blends of various ingredients. We're demonstrating a mileage ingredient. Almost out of Yellowstone. Let's switch to the finish line. It's been more than two hours now. Well, here comes one car. Which one is it? Super Shell with Platformate. JB, where's the other car? 
Way back here, its fuel supply has run out. If you want good mileage, get Super Shell with Platform 8. Super Shell, wherever you see this sign. NCAA football kicks off September 16th on ABC. The massive log boom anchored on Lake Washington occupied every space, I believe, by a pleasure craft and the cocktail flag flying as we get ready for the final moments. Bill Shoemaker will drive the Miss Bardall in the final heat of the 1967 Gold Cup race. And Bob Schroeder will be driving the Atlas Van Lines boat. And Warner Gardner challenging in the Miss Lapeer. And a newcomer to unlimited hydroplane racing, Mike Thomas in the Miss Budweiser. And Jim McCormick in the Wayfarers Club Lady, which was the fastest qualifier at just a fraction under 120 miles an hour. And of course, Bill Muncy driving the Miss U.S. The Atlas moving out, and uh, Mike Thomas and the Budweiser will be the last one to go out onto the course. Now remember, the Miss Bardall leads in total points. The closest challenger is the Miss Lapeer. There's Mike Thomas in the Budweiser going out, and Mike has done a fine job in his first Gold Cup race. More than 200,000 people along the shores of Lake Washington for this final heat. Been a fine day, a little blustery, a little windy at times, and of course we've had the accident, but it's been a day of excitement for these people interested in water sports. And as the field turns off the north turn away from the floating bridge, let's look at the standings again going into the final heat. Miss Bardall, 1,200 points. Miss Lapeer, 1,100 points. Followed by the Miss Budweiser, 925. The Miss U.S., 750. Then we have Atlas Van Lines at 596 and Wayfarers Club Lady, 521. And Wayfarers Club Lady did not start. The Wayfarers Club Lady is not in the final field. So as they streak for the starting line of the final heat, we have five boats. Bardall, Lapeer, Budweiser, U.S., Atlas and it is U.S. across the starting line first. Bardall right there alongside Bill Muncy. And as we look at him, let's place him left to right. It is U.S. Bardall. Lapeer is on the outside with Budweiser running inside. And we look now at the challenging boat, Miss Lapeer with Warner Gardner running to the outside, moving up alongside now of Bill Muncy in the U.S. But remember, Bill Muncy explained earlier, there is a distinct advantage of being on the inside position. Now, as they come off the exit buoy of the south turn, we can place them for you. The red boat is the Miss U.S. running just to the outside, and in second place is Miss Bardall with Billy Shoemaker. Billy Shoemaker has 1,200 points. He is followed by Miss Lapeer with Warner Gardner and Mike Thomas as the Budweiser running right tight in there, very close to third place. We might get quite a battle for third before this final heat is over. 15 miles, five times around the three-mile course. The red boat is the U.S. owned by George Simons out of Detroit and driven by Bill Muncy. The gold boat, the Miss Bardall, leading in total points as they go into the north turn. And now the Budweiser begins to move up for third place. And Warner Gardner in the Lapeer is outside. Budweiser takes inside. And Mike Thomas has taken third place away from Warner Gardner. So Gardner, who is trying to challenge the Bardall and trying to pick up the extra 100 points he needs to tie and pick up as much time as he could in hopes that he could sneak in and grab the Gold Cup. He's got to come in the back door, and that'll be tough the way the Bardall is running. The leader in the heat is Bill Muncy in the Miss U.S. The leader in the race is the Miss Bardall running in second place. And they are running, listen to this, 106.2 miles an hour for Bill Muncy, the leader in the final heat in the first lap. Miss Bardall running at 103 miles an hour. One of the most dramatic pictures anywhere in any kind of sport is these big unlimiteds come crashing and thundering into the turn. Running in first place in the final heat. Miss Bardall leading the race, running in second place. And in third place right now inside is the Budweiser with Lapeer running outside and very tight on the Budweiser. But as of this moment, this boat, the Lapeer, is outside and in fourth place. But now the Budweiser loses power coming off the south turn. And Miss Lapeer with Warner Gardner moves back up into third place. So Warner Gardner gets a bit of a break there as the Budweiser lost power coming off the exit buoy in the south turn. So now the chase is on again as Gardner zeroes in on Miss Bardall. The order right now, Miss Lapeer, Bardall, that's only Bardall right there and only anxiously watching as his gold unlimited flies around in the wake of the Miss U.S. There's the Bardall. 
right there coming into your picture. And the Bardall, all he has to do now, Billy Shoemaker just finishes this heat. He will win the 1967 Gold Cup, and we'll take a look at the final moments in just a moment. are at the final moments of the 1967 Gold Cup race, Miss U.S. with Bill Muncy leading in this final heat. And Bill is battling here, trying to win this heat and move up to third place overall in the standings. And he has driven a very fast final heat. Started out at 106 plus, and he's kept his speed up in excess of 104 miles an hour, and the going has been pretty rough. So he's trying to win the heat and move up in the overall standings, but the fellow who sits at the very top of the standings right now as we go into the final lap is this young man, 24-year-old Bill Shoemaker, driving only Bardall's Miss Bardall. It'll be the fourth Gold Cup victory for the Bardall if Bill Shoemaker hangs on and finishes. Here, the Budweiser running outside. It is a crippled boat, but Mike Thomas is trying to bring it home, and if he is able to finish this heat, the Budweiser could move up to fourth place in the final overall standing. So streaking into the setting sun is the Miss Bardall with Bill Shoemaker. And he has just a few hundred feet left to go, and he can claim his first Gold Cup and the fourth for Ole Bardo. Here it comes. Miss U.S. with Bill Muncy. Flying up through the straightaway and into the turn. And Bill Muncy will come off the turn, get the second flag from Harry Richmond. He'll win the heat, but the 1967 Gold Cup champion, the Miss Bardall. In second place will be Miss Lapeer with Warner Gardner, who drove a very fast, very courageous race, but just could not quite overcome the big point bulge that Billy Shoemaker took into the final heat. And here are the standings. Miss Bardall winning, $7,800 plus, a new car and a round-trip ticket to Rome. Miss Lapeer is second, that's $7,900, followed by the U.S. and Miss Budweiser and Atlas Van Lines, the top five finishers. We'll be back with a winner's interview for you in just a moment. Why didn't somebody think of this before? Men in skin bracer in the office cooler. Nobody's going to get hot and bothered now. Men in skin bracer is more than just a good fragrance. It's a great feeling. Cool, crisp, refreshing. Menin also comes in a handy home-sized dispenser, so you can keep your cool. With a blade this sharp, you need a shave this smooth. Soft stroke by Menin, the lubricated shave. Soft stroke smooths the way with a built-in lubricant that cushions the blade, protects your skin. With a blade this sharp, you need a shave this smooth. Soft stroke, the lubricated shave. He don't kiss people, he says. <laughs> well, he doesn't like you to kiss <laughs> Billy, congratulations. Well, thank you, Keith. You've had some big wins this year, but this has got to be the biggest one you've ever had, I guess. This is the one we wanted, right. It's one I've been wanting for about 10 years now. You've been working at it 15 years, all the way from the juniors all the way to the big top. That's right. It's, it's a real pleasure to be here, and it takes a hard-working crew like I have to get here. Billy, you've got a boat that performed unusually well, ran beautiful for you. At least it looked like it from the shore. Very definitely. I have absolutely no complaints at all. I think Ed Carlson built a beautiful boat here. Well, the crew gave you everything you needed. Were there any bad moments for you during the race? No, not really. In fact, I'm. this is the happiest I've ever been with a second-place finish in one heat. <laughs> Congratulations, Billy Shoemaker, the 1967 Gold Cup champion. The crew, Ben, he's all yours. Before we leave Lake Washington, let's talk to the man who's been working with us and the man who won the final heat, Bill Muncy. Congratulations on that win, Bill. <laughs> well, it came a little late in the day, and uh, there wasn't enough of it, I don't think, Keith. I'm... Uh... I'm mighty pleased, though, with Billy Shoemaker. I just think he did a remarkable job. I think he's the brightest star on, on the unlimited horizon, and we're going to be, he's going to be a tough nut to crack. He's a young guy, and he's got a lot of knowledge and a lot of cockpit experience, and he's a thinker. And uh, I just don't know, honestly, who's going to beat him. 
Well, there's a few old war horses like you. Still around. <laughs> Bill, it was a great pleasure working with you again. Oh, Keith, it's great to do the Wide World of Sports show, and I certainly hope that maybe in some way we've contributed to the uh, the public's fun of enjoying Gold Cup 1967. Thank you, Bill. Bill Muncie. And now this is Keith Jackson from the Gold Cup race on Lake Washington in Seattle. of defeat. The human drama of athletic competition. This has been ABC's Wide World of Sports. Brought to you by new Ban Spray. Ban won't wear off as the day wears on. Protect you from odor a full 24 hours. By Allstate Insurance Company. You're in good hands with Allstate. And by Menon's Soft Stroke. The smooth shave made especially for today's sharp blade. Soft Stroke, the lubricated shave by Menon. This has been an ABC Television Network sports presentation. <laughs>